Watch Project 2025. The Executive Office of the President of the United States, the National Economic Council. The National Economic Council is one of the policy councils serving the President, along with the NSC and the Domestic Policy Council, DPC. The Director serves as Principal Advisor to the President on domestic and international economic policy and communicates the President's economic message to the media. The Deputy Director is responsible for the day-to-day -day operation of the Council which includes chairing the committee that coordinates economic policy development at the deputy secretary level. In effect, the director and deputy director are the officials who are primarily responsible for the development of economic policy making for the administration. Once a policy is adopted, it is the appropriate agency's responsibility to implement it. The NEC's policy process is also used to determine whether the President should support or oppose legislation passed by Congress. In addition to its leadership, the NEC has policy experts, for example Special Assistants to the President or SAPs, who are responsible for developing and coordinating, as well as advising the President on specific issues. It is essential that the policy expertise of the NEC reflect the current environment's most pressing issues. Today, this would include, among other topics, taxes, energy and environment, technology, infrastructure, healthcare, financial services, workforce, agriculture, antitrust and competition policy, and retirement programs. NEC's SAPs should have a working knowledge of how the administration can implement policy through the rulemaking process, although it is not necessary that they be experts on regulation themselves, particularly given OMB's role. This will facilitate the NEC's effectiveness in coordinating administration policy. The NEC needs to work closely with other offices within the Executive Office of the President to promote innovation by the private sector and create an environment that will stimulate economic activity while reducing federal spending and debt. This includes working with the DPC, NSC, OMB, Council of Economic Advisers, Office of Intergovernmental Affairs, Office of Cabinet Affairs, White House Council, Council on Environmental Quality, Office of Legislative Affairs, and Office of Science and Technology Policy. To this end, the NEC Director should chair a standing meeting with the principals from each of the other EOP offices to enhance coordination from within the White House. In the past, there has been tension among the DPC, NEC and NSC over jurisdiction. It is important to set clear jurisdictions at the start of an administration to prevent needless and counterproductive turf fights. In addition, the Principal Deputy for International Economic Policy is jointly appointed at NEC and NSC and could end up serving two different interests. To avoid such problems, international economic policy should be entirely coordinated from NEC. It will be especially important for the NEC to work seamlessly with the Council of Economic Advisers, CEA, which provides the President and the White House offices with the latest economic data and forecasts, as well as estimates of the economic impact of proposed policies and prepares the annual economic report of the President. The CEA is not a policy council and therefore does not run policy processes which is the responsibility of the NEC, DPC and NSC. However, the CEA does play a key role in ensuring that any policy considered by the councils is rigorously evaluated for its economic impacts. The NEC works closely with the White House Office of Communications and Office of Speechwriting to ensure that the White House's messaging and media engagement communicate the President's economic policy effectively. The NEC also plays a key role in advancing the President's economic agenda by advising the Office of Presidential Personnel on appointments to key economic posts, including positions in financial regulatory agencies. The NEC helps to ensure that each economic post is held by a person who shares the President's policy priorities and works well with the rest of the administration's economic team. The financial regulators are run partly by civil servants, some of whom were political appointees in prior liberal administrations, who often resist a conservative administration's policies. 
It is therefore critical that an administration not only appoints capable individuals to lead these agencies, but also has personnel who can be hired into senior staff positions within the agencies. A few areas will be especially important if the NEC is to develop a well-defined economic policy agenda. One is the promotion of innovation as a foundation for economic growth and opportunity. Another is the creation of an environment that fosters economic growth through tax reform and the elimination of regulatory and procedural barriers. Office of the U.S. Trade Representative USTR. The Office of the U.S. Trade Representative provides the President with the internal White House resources necessary to formulate and execute a unified, whole-of-government approach to trade policy. The President should ensure that the USTR is empowered to serve in that leadership role, much as other EOP components organize and drive a coordinated policy agenda on behalf of the President. The People's Republic of China's predatory trade practices have disrupted the open market trading system that has provided mutual benefit to all participating countries, including China, for decades. The failure of the World Trade Organization WTO, to discipline China for abrogation of its trading commitments has seriously undermined its credibility and made it a largely ineffective institution. The United States, through an empowered USTR, must act to rebalance and refocus international trading relationships in favor of democratic nations that embrace free, fair and open trade principles built on market-driven economies. Chapter 26 of this book outlines recommended trade policy priorities for the incoming president. However, regardless of the approach, Successful implementation of that trade agenda will require the President to articulate a clear policy direction and instructions for the executive branch to operate in a coordinated fashion under the leadership of an empowered USTR. To address these and other challenges, protect the American worker and secure free and open markets for our communities and businesses, the next president must leverage the institutional resources and strength of the USTR and neither allow institutional interests to drive a fragmented trade policy that is developed from the ground up, nor cater to parochial interests across government and Washington's broader industry of influence. The USTR's mission is vitally important in reorienting the global trading system in a direction that is open, fair and prosperous. In order to achieve the President's policy goals, a strong USTR must be empowered to set trade policy from the White House with the authority and resources to represent the interests of the President's trade agenda with adequate budget, staff, analysis and expertise to engage meaningfully in internal and inter-agency policy deliberations. The USTR should organize and harness existing interagency trade committees to serve the President's trade agenda and drive a consensus among federal stakeholders, dispose of legacy advisory committees with members who serve special interests, direct action to implement policy priorities, measure progress toward implementing the President's agenda, and hold agencies and officials accountable for delivering the President's agenda. The USTR's leadership should not only coordinate and enforce the President's agenda across the federal community, but also set and enforce the President's trade agenda internally. Trade policy and priorities should be set by the President and implemented by the US Trade Representative in cooperation with the other economic and national security officials, not by the range of governmental and non-governmental interests that attempt to force their policy preferences on the USTR. A strong USTR empowered with the necessary resources, authorities and interagency cooperation will protect US interests in the global marketplace more effectively. Thank you for watching this video. Please like it, share it and subscribe. Our goal is to give you all of the business, geopolitical, financial and investment news you can use from a local and global viewpoint so you and your business can thrive, not just survive. Support our channel for free by joining our private email list, where we give you thousands of dollars worth of exclusive financial and business development information monthly, designed to help you prosper. Click the link in the description to buy our ebook.